from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. What does a picture of men building a sewer mean to you? Nothing, perhaps, if you live in a community that has an adequate sewage disposal system. But to the people of thousands of cities and towns throughout the United States, sewers are a vital problem. Whole communities have been swept by epidemic diseases directly traceable to an open sewer. Whole families have sickened, yes, and died from disease that started in a cesspool. Many of the plagues and pestilences of the Dark Ages were caused by the inadequate facilities for disposing of waste material. Yet until recently, vast parts of our own country were in the Dark Ages in this respect. That is why more than 5,000 cities and towns are using the opportunity for sanitary improvement offered by WPA to build and repair sewers. The immediate result of the work that these men are doing is apparent in enhanced property values, and its long-term value in preventing disease and saving life is incalculable. None of the work WPA is doing is more practical than these thousands of sewage disposal plants and sewer construction and improvement projects that are in progress throughout the nation. In addition to its work in preventing disease, WPA is doing much to relieve physical distress. A toothache is bad enough when you can afford to have it treated. When you can't, it's a disaster. To a child who might otherwise be lame for life, an orthopedic clinic, partly or wholly staffed by WPA workers, is the only means to the priceless gift of health. And these are but two examples of the thousands of such projects that employ professional and white collar workers. These people are wholly unsuited for physical labor, but they can render a vital and essential service. Through WPA, this service is being brought to millions of people who cannot afford to purchase it. Someone must take care of these children and sick adults too who cannot afford treatment, although soon they will be able to pay for medical service. Cooperating with private medicine, WPA is providing treatment that may mean life itself, while behind the lines, other WPA workers help the endless fight against disease that is carried on in laboratories. Another important phase of the WPA health program lies in supplying additional or improved hospital facilities. This therapeutic pool is a good example. Medical science has long recognized the value of this underwater treatment for infantile paralysis victims. Heretofore, the treatment has been available in a few noted places, such as Warm Springs, Georgia. But in the entire Midwest state where this pool is located, there were no facilities for this treatment until the pool was built by WPA labor. Today, hundreds of children suffering from this dread disease who might otherwise face a lifetime on crutches are winning their way back to health and strength in the tepid waters of this pool. The specially trained nurse wears a rubber wading suit to guard her against the effects of prolonged immersion. But her little patients need no such protection for their short daily periods of play and exercise in the water. To them, this treatment is just as much fun as healthy children find at the beach or swimming hole. But each period in the water is bringing them closer to the day when they'll return to normal health. Some of the children that you see here are practically helpless out of the water, although they can walk or swim in the pool, while others, under treatment for several months, are already playing the games of healthy children. Practically all WPA work is specialized, planned to fit the capabilities of the worker. In aiding those who are handicapped by nature, this planning may be difficult. But even here, practical projects have been developed. For instance, these readers and blind braille machine operators, both WPA workers, are transcribing the classics into braille. And to make life more livable for the blind children of one state institution, WPA has built this circular roller skating rink. The path is banked at the turns and graded so that the blind skaters can feel the curves as they approach them. This is a part of a landscaping project that includes marking each bush and shrub in braille. 
For those who are too old and infirm for the rigors of more strenuous labor, WPA has provided simple work such as this toy making project. A pick or shovel would go poorly in these old hands, yet these men are far happier doing something than they would be as objects of charity, spending their days in idleness. And how valuable is their work? That depends on the value of a toy to a child who has none. Perhaps there are some who are hard-hearted enough to call this boondoggling. One type of practical project that employs some handicapped persons is the repair of books. The Depression years brought many schools to the point where several children were forced to share one book. Library service was curtailed because of the lack of funds to buy new books and replace those that were worn out. Today, thousands of these books that have outlived their first usefulness are being repaired and rebound by WPA workers to give many more years of useful service, supplying a drastic educational need. WPA has found another use for books in its library extension projects. Through these traveling libraries, books are carried into small towns or villages, bringing the joy of reading to those whose only library was meager and hard to get. And what of the women? There were over 400,000 of them on relief rolls, many of whom were heads of families with children and other dependents. WPA teachers give young women courses of instruction in home economics. Under skilled guidance, they learn thoroughly the art of cookery. And after they've learned how to properly prepare food, they're taught the details of properly setting a table, after which comes instruction in how to serve. Homemaking information they've always wanted, but never had the opportunity to acquire. Thousands receive instructions in washing and ironing. And as they completed their course, did they find themselves in demand? They did. Thousands have entered domestic employment or become part-time household helpers, thus taking themselves off the relief rolls. Sewing rooms were established all over the country, where surplus materials were converted into men's shirts, women's and children's dresses and suits, for free distribution among those who are destitute. Thousands of women and girls were taught the routine of invalid bed making, thus adding to their value as domestic helpers. These may seem to the passing glance to be what the critics of WPA call boondoggling. That's as good a word to use as any. Well, here's another then. Expert instruction is being given on the proper care of infant babies. Here is information they are used not only in assisting others, but in properly caring for their own babies when they arrive. Infant insurance for future generations. Boondoggling? Yes, if that's the word for making women more useful members of their own communities. Adults in school, 1,400,000 of them seizing the opportunity to learn from 40,000 WPA teachers. In many communities, the foreign born who have not had the opportunity to learn English are learning to read and write. They are also taught the principles of citizenship. Scattered throughout the land are numerous historical shrines, many of which were forgotten or badly run down through neglect and lack of funds. Rebuilding these shrines is important, for they are a firm link with a past well worth remembering. In this one, for instance, WPA has brought to life stories of Abraham Lincoln's boyhood. The authentic log cabins in this group are replicas of buildings that served prominently in Lincoln's early life. The grocery store in which he worked is here as is a replica of Judge Pitchard's library from which Lincoln borrowed law books. This is but one of hundreds of historical landmarks that are being preserved for posterity by WPA workers. And when the woman who is head of a family must work, who takes care of her children? That is the question which is being answered across the face of America by WPA nursery schools. Here again, unemployed women, particularly adapted to guide young children, take care of the tots of working or needy mothers. They serve help building noon lunches to hundreds of thousands of children. In addition to good food, the youngsters get proper rest, sunshine, air, and a glimpse of the birthright of every American child. This is health insurance for the coming generation. Long after the need for this emergency work is passed, long after the Depression is forgotten, this work will remain as a part of a better America.
This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.